Let us look at some of the tools you can use when you study the Bible. Simple tools, but they give you great satisfaction. The first one is typology. A type is always small, it's ethnic, it's geographical, and it points to something much bigger. So the Old Testament has got stories, events, history, and in the New Testament, especially in the book of Revelation, it becomes universal and it transcends all ethnical boundaries. Then eschatology, speaking of things that points to the end. And then soterology, Christ, salvation. When you read the Bible, you'll see his grace in all the Old Testament stories. This is good for the heart, this old sinful heart. Then archaeology, where things mentioned in the Bible were dug up, confirming the truth of the Bible. Now in Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 12, verse 42, it says, The queen of the south will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. Why? For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom he was a very very wise man especially after he discovered he was foolish and now one greater than Solomon is here now look at the word Solomon and the one greater who is type who is anti-type Solomon is type and Christ who says, I am greater, is the antitype. Type is small, antitype is big. Christ has got all the wisdom, much more than all the kings that ever lived. Kings are type of King Jesus. So when I read about the kings, I should find aspects pointing to the great King Jesus Christ. This is a model of the temple. Matthew 12, 6 says, I tell you that one, Jesus speaking, one greater than the temple is here. Where's type? Where's anti-type? Temple is type and Christ is anti-type. Small, great. So everything that you read about in the temple points to Jesus Christ. He is the light, he is the bread, he is the law, he is grace, he is everything. So when you read the Old Testament, look for Jesus Christ, he's there. Who is the type and who is the antitype? The temple is the type and Jesus is the antitypical high priest. This is Nineveh, next to Mosul, northern part of Iraq. Verse 41 says, the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now one greater than Jonah is here. Jesus speaks to the people. He points to Jonah and he says, one greater than Jonah is here. Where's type? Where's anti-type? Jonah, type. Jesus, anti-type. Jesus is the great prophet. Jonah was a great prophet. He wrote his autobiography in the book Jonah. But he was a great man. Type, anti-type. Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. What would you say is the meaning of grace? This is soterology, speaking of a saviour. So we've got grace right in the beginning of the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis. Is this a type of soterology? Yes. And we all find grace in the eyes of God, irrespective of who we are. 
Verse 13, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Destroy. Is this a type of a greater destruction? Is this eschatology? When you read a verse of scripture, ask yourself a few questions. Now, let's ask Jesus to interpret this statement. And he says in Matthew 24, 36, 7, As it was in the days of Noah, far in the past, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. This is eschatology. Taking the past making it an example of what will happen in the future. Eschatology. You're looking at the destruction of Sodom. It says in Luke 17, 28, 29, it was the same in the days of Lot. Same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, eating too much, drinking too much, buying and selling, buying too much, selling too much, Planting and building too much, they had no time for God. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. And here you can see the evidence of the destruction by fire. The Arabic, Arabic name is Bab et Tra. Luke 17, 30. It will be just like this on the day of the Son of Man. When the, I'll read it again. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. So what happened to Sodom will happen to this planet in the near future. Eschatology and typology. What do we call this? Both. Type, antitype. Eschatology. How should we study the book of Revelation? How do you explain the image of the beast of Revelation 13? You have to go back to the Old Testament. The Old Testament will give you the type to understand the antitype. In the book of Revelation we read about the seven last plagues. What happened before and after the outpouring of the plagues? Can you remember? How many types, examples of plagues do we have in the Old Testament? So here we have the antitype, the great. But there are two other types in the Old Testament that explains the plagues of the book of Revelation. The falling of the ten plagues in the time of Moses are types of the antitypical plagues of the book of Revelation. What are antitypes? And it taps is the final event. Do we find early Egyptian plagues in the Bible? Could they perhaps be types of the ten Egyptian plagues? In other words, were there plagues before the ten plagues fell on Egypt? Let's, invest, let's investigate Abram's presence in Egypt. Now, Abram is also a type of the end time Abrams. Abram was called out of Babylonia. And Revelation 18 verse 4 says, Come out of her, my people, out of Babylon. Not physical Babylon, but mystical Babylon. This Bedouin boy took me to Serabit al -Kadim. I did research on proto sinaitic script. But I found something interesting here. I found a relationship between Abram and the site that I visited here. What do these hieroglyphics tell us? Egyptian hieroglyphics. They tell us about Pharaoh Amenhotep III, or is also called Sesostris III. Son of Sunesrit III. 
This temple was built by the son of this famous father, Sunesrit III, a mighty pharaoh. Now, who was this Sinesrut III, or Sesostris III? He was a co-ruler with his son. Just remember this fact. Two co-rulers. We're looking at types that's going to build up to a great antitype. He was also the pharaoh who took Sarah into his harem on whom the plagues were visited. Remember, Abram is a type of the end time Abrams who are called out of Babylon. Can we expect co rulership from the pharaoh during the ten plagues? Can we expect this end time co rulership, the antitype? If you have the type here, you will have the antitypes build up to something bigger. Typology is exciting. Karna Temple. What kind of civilization did Abram find in Egypt? Remember he traveled the Fertile Crescent, a long way, thousands of miles, living in tents, and suddenly they come to Egypt very highly civilized country. It feels like home. For the first time, they could go to a big supermarket. They could buy what they wanted to. It felt like home. Statue of Anken Sen Amun, the wife of Tutank Amun, now, what impact did Sarah have on Egypt? How would the Egyptian daily news describe the coming of a prince and his companion from Ur? He was a prince. And uh, how would the newspaper describe this man coming to Egypt? The editor would have made mention of Abram's sister as one of the most attractive women ever to visit Egypt. Is this how Abram introduced her? Now Sarah had a lighter complexion than the Egyptian woman. Uh, why did Abram lie, telling people she's my sister? It says in Genesis 12, 12 and 13, when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is my wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. The Bible is an honest biography. It tells the mistakes of these Bible heroes. Look at the mess that Abram is making. Wow. Lost faith in God, telling lies, putting his wife into straits. Your comment about God's Semitic remnant from Babylon? Remember, he was the last person to remain faithful to God. The descendants of Shem, uh, of uh, Ham, and Japheth all became polytheists, and the Semitic uh, clan also became polytheistic, worshipping many gods. Even Abram's father, Terah, became a worshipper of strange gods. Abram was the last, the remnant. And now we've got to connect type and anti-type. Did the remnant do well? No, not at all. Genesis 12, 14 and 15, when Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that she was a very beautiful woman. And when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Sarah, and she was taken into his palace. Your majesty, 
We've never seen a more, more beautiful woman than this. We recommend her. And maybe they would get a little something for recommending another wife for the harem. It is, it is such an experience when you walk on the ruins of the temple and the harem of Pharaoh Sunnesser III, contemporary of Abram. Why do we tell lies? When we lose faith in God, we lie. If we have faith in him, we are truthful. Tashur, where the drama occurred, how did Pharaoh reward Abram for releasing his sister? So when they came to take Sarah, he said, well, have my sister. Genesis 10, 16. He treated Abram well for the sake, for her sake. And Abram acquired sheep, cattle, male and female donkeys, manservants and maidservants and camels. He became a multimillionaire in one day. He had all the wealth. But he lost his grip on God and spiritually he was bankrupt. This is the dilapidated pyramid of Sennesrut III. What should have happened to Abram for misrepresenting the character of God? This was a bad mistake. What should have happened to him? Do you think he deserved punishment like plagues for doing this to Sarah? Misrepresenting God? Yes! He needed a good hiding. How did God treat his repentant son? And he has a beautiful message. Where did the plagues fall? This is interesting. It should have fallen on Abram, but where did it fall? Let's go back to the ruins of the palace of Pharaoh Sunnesret the third. Genesis twelve seventeen, and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. What a paradox! Abram should have gotten the hiding, and now the Pharaoh gets it. Why didn't Sinesra the third execute Abram? How did he treat Abram? Is type going to explain the antitype? Yes. Genesis twelve, eighteen to twenty. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. Come here. What have you done to me? He said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister? So that I took her to be my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. The paradox of God's grace. I cannot fathom it. Gera, where Isaac was born. What does the psalmist say about the plagues? Psalms 105, 14 and 15. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. He was an anointed and he was a prophet. Don't touch him. Sinesret III was the fifth and most powerful pharaoh of the 12th dynasty. Eventually he was deified and his subject worshipped him as a god, mightiest pharaoh of the 12th dynasty. <coughs> Typology, will we find the mightiest pharaoh 
during the tenth plagues ever? And will we find a mighty ruler at the end of time during the seven last plagues? Biblical Goshen, Wadi Tumilath, what caused Abram to go to Egypt? What caused him to go to Egypt? What happened when he lost his grip on God? The Lord said, go to Canaan, the promised land, and he went down to Egypt. So what happened when he lost his grip on God? Sarah ended up in a harem, and the plan of salvation was in jeopardy. You read of Abram building altars, but you don't read that he built an altar in Egypt. He didn't testify of the wonderful plan of salvation in Egypt. Broken statue of Ramses at Tarnas. What happened when they repented? Him and Sarah said, God, we're sorry. They wept and they repented. When that happened, the plagues fell on the unrepentant and not on the repentant. They left, they left for Canaan with gifts from the Pharaoh, camels, donkeys, male slaves and female slaves. And one of the female slaves' name was Hagar. Beautiful. Typology? Well, Israel during the ten plagues, leave with wealth? And will the end time people during the seven last plagues leave this planet with wealth? Typology says yes. Are you afraid of disappointing God like Abram did? We don't want to disappoint him. There are certain temptations I'm very weary of. We've all got our weak points. And sometimes we wonder, will we make it or will we not make it? Now, Abram's experience reveals God's grace to those who try, but to falter and fall. In the little book, Steps to, Steps to Christ, it says that God does not look at the periodic fall of a person but the trend of his life, where he's heading to. And I like this. We serve a marvelous God. Type brings hope to the antitypical end time Abrams, which may falter and fall, but to gets up again. Grace is not about fairness. Grace is not about fairness. You cannot understand it. It's illogical. When we repent, the plagues fall elsewhere. Soterology, typology, eschatology, it's all in the story of Abram. Sheep at Hebron. What did Jacob do when he faced hunger like his grandfather? It's a sad story. Exactly what Abram did. He went down to Egypt. How did the grandson Moses, the future deliverer, behaved himself in Egypt? Genesis 2.11 says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren, and looked on their burdens, and he spied on and he spied an Egyptian smiting an, an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And guess what? He lost his temper. That's bad. Losing your temper is not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Especially Moses, who was to deliver God's people. Verse 12, And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian, and hid him in the sand. A murderer. Can God use a murderer? 
Can God use you and me? Damaged image of uh, Hatshepsut. What is the relationship between the pharaohs of the time of Abram and the time of Moses? This is the tomb of Amenhotep II, son of Tutmosis III. Co-regency? Yes. Just like you have it in the story of Abram, there were two kings, Sunesrut III and his son Amenenhat III. Mightiest of the 12th dynasty. Here you have the mightiest of the 18th dynasty. Typology helps you to appreciate the Bible. Sarcophagus of Tutmosis III. Both Sinestret III and Tutmosis III were the most powerful rulers of the dynasties. Both were worshipped. Type, anti-type. Typology helps you to appreciate the Bible. Does the Nile remind you of one of the plagues? Which one was it? First one. Now, did Moses deserve to be punished? Yes. Why? He, as the future leader, killed a man and buried him. This was a shameful act. But why did the plagues fall on Pharaoh and not on Moses? Same thing that happened to Abram, happened to Moses. He repented during that 40 years in the desert. But Pharaoh hardened his heart. Repentance transfer the plague somewhere else. This is God's grace. The revelation of God's grace in the time of Abram was repeated in the time of Moses. What about you and me? If we repent, the plagues are transferred to our enemies. The curse is transferred also to Jesus Christ. Abram left Egypt with wealth. What about Moses and the Israelites? What does typology teach? They also will live with wealth. And this is what Exodus 3, 21, 22 says. And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters, and so you will plunder the Egyptians. They left with the wealth of the Egyptians. What will happen after the outpouring of the end time plagues? We are going to live with wealth. Which church was represented here? Laodicea. This is the last church. What is the spiritual condition of this church? Terrible. I tasted, tasted the water of Laodicea. It's lukewarm. I spat it out. How did the church of Laodicea taste? How does it taste for God in his mouth? It says in Revelation 3, 15 and 16, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold, it's nice to have a cool drink when it's hot, no hot, and when it's cold, you appreciate a hot drink. I wish you were either one or the other, one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Bumakale Laodicea. 
detestable, self-righteous, content. This is a terrible, sinful state. What do they deserve, Laodicea? Plagues, punishment. Like Abraham, Moses, they do deserve it. But what's happening? What do the types teach? Repentance transfers the plagues, the punishment, somewhere else. The types of the Old Testament find their antitypical fulfillment in the book of Revelation. Can we expect two similar cruel tyrants in the near future? Revelation 13.2, the beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. It takes this from Daniel chapter 7. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. Will this beast have a co-ruler like the persecuting pharaohs in time of Abram and the time of Moses? What does typology teach us? Yes. Verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. Will they be worshipped like the pharaohs? Revelation 13, 4. Men worship the dragon because he had given authority to the beast and they also worship the beast and ask who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? The Egyptians said, who can make war against Sunesret the third? And they said, who can make war against Tutmosis the third? So the echoes of the Old Testament finds their fulfillment in the book of Revelation. Will the plagues be poured out on the woman, the remnant church, Laodicea? No. Why not? The types say it will not happen. She will repent like Abram. She will repent like Moses. It says in Revelation 12, 11, they overcame him, that's Laodicea, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. They will repent like Abram, like Moses. Is there hope for Laodicea? Hope for us. The prophecy says, Laodicea will repent. That's good news. Revelation 15 and 16 tell about the seven last plagues that will fall on the unrepented. What will happen next according to typology after the plagues? Abram was liberated from Egypt. Israel was liberated from Egypt. Will we also be liberated from this Egypt of sin and Slavery? Typology says yes. The undeserved Abram and Moses left Egypt with an abundance of wealth. With what kind of wealth will the redeemed depart from this Egypt of bondage after the falling of the seven last plagues? Here is the wealth. Revelation 21.4 He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. When grief ends in your life, you will be wealthy. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. This is real wealth, not the car I drive, not my bank account. This is wealth. After the plagues, I will have this wealth. 
a permanent departure from the bondage of pain to the wealth of eternal happiness. What indescribable wealth from the bondage of mortality and death to the wealth of the tearless immortal life with Jesus. My weak and faltering friend, will you ever make it to heaven? When you look at yourself, you've got doubts but when you look to Jesus you've got hope let your focus be at the right place you don't have to miss heaven allow Jesus to get you there how will Jesus get us into heaven on Calvary the plagues that should have fallen on us fell on him. We've had our punishment in Jesus Christ. He becomes the perfect Abram, the perfect Moses, the perfect Israel and the perfect you. Hosea 11 verse 1, when Israel was a child I loved him and out of Egypt I called my son. Who is this Israel child? Abram and Moses were called out of Egypt. How did they perform? They did not perform. They did not perform too well. Someone else had to flee like Abram and Jacob for survival to Egypt. Who was that? Jesus. He also fled there. Here in the shadow of the pyramids, Jesus spent his first ten sinless years. Matthew 2 verse 13, When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. And here the three of them fled to Egypt. Was Jesus like Abram and Moses called out of Egypt? Yes. Type, anti-type, type, anti-type. What was his moral status when he left Egypt? Like Moses, Abram? No, he was perfect. Immaculate, victorious on our behalf. Matthew 2 verse 14 and 15. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where, they, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Where they failed, he succeeded. How do we get saved? Faltering? Repenting? Confessing sinners are being saved when they allow Jesus to cover them with his robe of perfect righteousness. It is a gift. The most difficult part is to accept the gift because we are so proud, we want to do our own thing. I invite you to accept heaven's salvation outfit right now father in heaven we do not deserve your kindness your forgiveness your salvation but you give it anyway thank you for being such a wonderful good god we praise your name in jesus name amen Thank you.